Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday, January 21st. Glad you are with us. I didn't catch all of the inauguration yesterday. There was quite a bit of coverage, yes. but I did see some of it. And in some of them, it was many military bands from around the country in the nation's capital perform for the uh, 46th president of the United States. Including a San Antonio native. That's right. So we're going to talk about this article that's on KSET.com. This is a uh, McCollum High School graduate Jerry Jeremy McBride, which is a class of 1997. He performed at the 2021 inauguration. Mm -hmm. Yep. As a matter of fact, uh, he is from the 1997 class of McCollum. Was a member of the Cowboy Band, earned numerous awards from state solo, regional area band and was ranked one of the best euphonium players mm -hmm. in the state of Texas, a unique and rather long brass instrument. Yeah, there is a picture right there. And with a love for music, he continued his music education at Baylor University, where he received a Bachelor of Music and a Master's degree from University of North Texas. Also won several competitions in the professional brass world and is not only known by many in the music education world, but also very well respected. But a big day yes. for a San Antonio uh, musician yeah. who's uh, quite accomplished in its own right, but also happens to be serving our country in the United States Army. There he is. There he is. Congratulations again to Jeremy. And, you know, looking back for, you know, those who are looking at younger grades, he began his musical journey in sixth grade at Terrell Wells Middle School. And he currently lives in D.C. and he's a member of the U.S. Army's uh, Pershing's own military band. Congratulations, sir. Again, thank you for your service. Boy, he's never going to forget what happened yesterday, is no, he? No, pretty memorable. For now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. President Joe Biden is waking up in the White House this morning after being sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. The newly sworn in commander in chief is pledging to bring a new era of unity to a divided nation. Vice President Kamala Harris makes history, becoming the first black and South Asian female vice president in U.S. history to take the oath of office. After being sworn in as the 46th president, Biden plunged into a stack of executive actions. President Biden says he is eager to go big early with an ambitious first 100 days in office, saying he wants to speed up the distribution of COVID-19 vaccinations across the country and pass a $1.9 trillion economic relief package. Some people facing deportation getting a reprieve from the new president. The Department of Homeland Security has announced it's pausing some deportations for 100 days. The order is a pledge from President Biden. The daily coronavirus death toll just topped 4,400, making it the highest ever in one day. Only about 16 and a half million vaccines have been given nationwide as states continue to deal with a surge in cases. Amazon offering a helping hand in the fight against COVID-19. A top company official has written President Biden saying Amazon is ready to help the new administration vaccinate 100 million Americans in the next 100 days. That includes opening vaccination sites at Amazon facilities. Apple is reportedly considering bringing back Touch ID to its iPhones. It comes as mask wearing adds a challenge to Face ID. Mercedes taking on Tesla in the all-electric SUV market. They've introduced the EQA, a new compact electric SUV. It goes on sale next month in Europe, initially with a range of about 265 miles per charge. And someone in Maryland has won the fourth largest Powerball jackpot in its history. That jackpot is worth more than $731 million, but no one has claimed the prize yet. According to Powerball, 12 tickets sold in seven states won the $1 million prize as well. None were in Texas, though. And that's today's 9 at 9. So the nearly billion-dollar jackpot for the other drawing is still out there. Yeah, no, Mega Millions like coming up. Also, um, I was going to say nobody in Texas, nobody in Texas won, won this one, but better luck next time maybe. Yes, outside with live cam. This really does set the scene yet again for another pretty murky start. We had some fog and some drizzle earlier. Where are we at as of 902, Justin? Still there. Uh, we still have some drizzle coming down here around San Antonio. Visibility wise, it's not so bad. San Antonio is uh, doing just fine when it comes to fog. There was some in Uvalde, and we're still dealing with that. It's down to about a mile visibility there. Kerrville, okay. Pleasanton, okay. We're not seeing just a ton of fog around the area, but it is there, and it will be patchy for another couple of hours. Let's look at the visibility there across uh, Bear County. Again, looks good. It's not until you get out towards Uvalde, and then places like Kennedy and Beeville, that's where we're also seeing the fog at this hour. 
Temperature wise, we're at 54 degrees. It didn't warm up much yesterday at all. I do think it warms up some more today. We should be in the mid 60s, just despite the fact we are going to keep skies fairly cloudy. Pollen count is in. The rain washed out of the mountain cedar. That's great news. But then it kicked up the mold. It's in the high category 3,820. So that's sort of the trade off. And the forecast for today drizzled through about noontime, and then we'll call for a couple showers here and there. Otherwise, just cloudy. 65 your high temperature. If you want some sun, we got some for you. It's coming up tomorrow, plus some more chances for some thunderstorms. We'll talk about that here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thanks, Justin. Looking forward to some sun. Looking at Loop 410 and Perrin Bottle Road, things running smoothly right now. Top stories we're following today. San Antonio police are investigating what they say are suspicious deaths of two teens on the east side. Police tell us an officer patrolling that area found the teens lying in the middle of the street. It happened just before 2.30 this morning in the 300 block of Fredonia Street. Police tell us the teens were pronounced dead at the scene by emergency crews. Officers are still investigating what happened leading up to the incident, but uh, tell us both teens who appeared to have been shot. A driver was detained on suspicion of a DWI following a rollover crash with a parked car. Officers tell us it happened around 1 this morning in the 100 block of Nunez Street. That's not far from Nogalitos and West Theo. Police tell us the driver of a Jeep was traveling at a high rate of speed when he crashed into a parked car. That crash caused the parked car to end up on top of another vehicle. Police say the driver also rolled his Jeep during the crash. No injuries were reported. Well, as you know by now, President Joe Biden officially in office, marking a big shift in political ideas and plans in the White House. So what does that mean for people in and around San Antonio? Our Max Massey spoke with two local congressmen on both sides of the aisle to talk about goals in the Biden administration and what comes next. We've seen those images in, 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 in other countries. You know, they run into the presidential palace, they run into legislative buildings, but it happens in other countries that you know, should not be happening here in the U.S. That's a day I never want to see ever again. You know, we have to make sure that we study that and we make sure that never happens again. 2021 didn't exactly start off on the best note. On January 6th, what was supposed to be the start of a peaceful transition of power ended in riots and chaos at the Capitol. But now there are goals to heal and work towards a united nation. Uh, right now we're in a contentious period in our nation's history and we just need to come together. We need to calm things down, realize we have more in common than we don't. We have a uh, vaccine that we have to get rolled out. We have a virus that we have to defeat. Uh, we have an economy that we got to get open again. Representative Tony Gonzalez is a new Republican congressman representing wow. Texas's 23rd district. And amongst other positions in the House, he sits on the Appropriations Committee. Also on the Appropriations Committee, but on the other side of the aisle, Congressman Henry Cuellar representing Texas's 28th district. Congressman Cuellar has represented his constituents since 2015 and has certain goals for the start of the Biden administration. We're going to work with them for a new stimulus package. Part of that's going to include a uh, making sure that the federal government gets involved in the vaccine rollout. Defeating this virus is crucial, especially in our smaller communities. I want to see the, the vaccine distributed to all parts of uh, my district and all parts of the state, from big cities like San Antonio to rural communities. Everybody needs it. I'd like to see our our first line responders get the resources they need to tackle this virus and distribute it. Defeating this virus and revitalizing our economy are clearly top priorities, but that's not all. There's a lot on this agenda. I want to work with the administration wherever possible. You know, there's some concerns that I have as far as uh, holding China accountable from a national security standpoint, ensuring that our southern border has all the resources they need, our border patrol agents, our uh, uh, police officers on the ground that are doing the work every day have the resources they need. It hasn't been an easy start, but the 117th Congress has big plans to put our country and our local communities back on the right track. We're going through very difficult times, but keep in mind that even though we've seen chaos, especially the last couple of weeks, the riots and all that, out of chaos will come out strength. Our best days are ahead of us. It's a tough time in our nation's history, but we are strong, we are resilient. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now it is 9.07, 54 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Texas versus the Fed's lawsuits are expected to return in full force after the power shift in Washington. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune will explain why Republicans are ready to take on a familiar role. And he said officials trying to bring more professional sports to San Antonio. Still ahead of looking at this week's KSAT Explains episode on the future 
of sports here in the Alamo City. And President Biden's plans for his first 100 days in office, plus a look at jobless claims next. Let's see how the market is reacting to the incoming administration now in place, down about uh, 17 points or so at 31,172. Welcome back and good morning in your morning headlines. The latest jobless numbers are out and they are still high. Plus far left protesters hit the streets in the northwest. China is sending members of former President Trump's administration out of office with sanctions and paint rocks and kindness all in one. Our David Sears is here to explain all of this. Hey, good morning, David. Paint rocks and kindness. Hmm. It's a garden. It, okay. okay. Yeah, see, now I got you interested. We'll hold on to that one first, just a second, though. But first, let's start with the numbers of Americans applying for unemployment benefits. Took a slight drop, but it's still high, right at 900,000. The winter spike in coronavirus numbers and lockdowns of some cities and states also have an impact on the numbers. According to some estimates, restaurant revenue dropped 21% last year. Economists seeing spending cutbacks all across the board, not just eating out because of restrictions, but also shopping and traveling. All right, this is what it looked like last night in Portland. Protests are turning violent and leaving their mark on buildings. The far left Antifa symbol was spray painted on the side of the Democratic headquarters in Portland, along with a profane message for President Biden. Protesters also busted out windows. There were physical confrontations with police. Several riders were arrested. Destruction also taking place in Seattle and Denver. This happening on the night of the inauguration when the country saw a peaceful transfer of power in Washington, D.C., thanks in part to over 20,000 National Guard troops standing guard. It was a history-making day for now President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington. The inauguration taking place with signs of the coronavirus looming in the background. No real crowds and heavy security, but as we said, still a peaceful transfer of power with plenty of pomp and circumstance. President Biden wasted no time getting to work after being inaugurated, signing 17 executive orders, undoing many of the orders President Trump had put in place from halting construction on the XL pipeline to halting construction on the border wall to re-entering the U.S. into the Paris Climate Accord. President Biden also having to deal with the coronavirus pandemic that saw the highest number of deaths across the country so far yesterday. China banning 28 of now former President Donald Trump's administration officials from their country, including former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The Chinese foreign minister said those individuals were banned from Chinese territories, including Hong Kong, Macau. China will also quit doing business with any companies connected to those people. China and former President Trump have battled over trade since the Trump administration took office. And finally this morning, take you to Missouri. This is Karen Houck's house, and that is Karen Houck's rock garden. She also calls it her kindness rock garden. Simple concept from Karen. Kindness is something everyone can spread. Karen started the Kindness Rock Garden after her daughter passed away back in 2017. It was a release. It turned out to be a neighborhood release as well and a method of expression for her neighbors. The concept, paint an uplifting message on a rock, leave it or come by and take a rock with a message on it. The right message seems to find the right person when they need it. Yeah, her garden is about tolerance and peace. So there you, you, you probably feel that walking down the street by her house or to her house to get a rock or paint a rock. Indeed. Did, isn't this what Rooney did <laughs> with rocks well, last year? Yes. Uh, actually, so it was uh, Grace Cathedral Church in, in the neighborhood. Right. And we would walk by and it's the same policy. Take a rock, uh, leave a rock. Right. Uh, you know, some of them had messages, you know, but some of them were just, you know, just painted just to lift up, you know, people's spirits. Uh, but you were you were struck how Rooney wanted to be involved in this. Oh, yeah. She yeah. was very uh, she was very moved. She wanted to go home right away and paint a and rock. Paint a rock. Right. So that way she could leave a rock and then she could take a rock. Mm -hmm. And then actually recently we, we passed by and she actually was starting like, oh, I want to take this rock. I'm like, you have to leave a rock first. <laughs> you can't just be taking all these Did she rocks. paint a rock? Yeah. What was yeah. the message on the rock she painted? Do you remember? It was it was uh, artistic. It was she didn't she didn't have a, a message. A message just paid it for, oh, for that one. Yeah, that can but, be they, very but sweet it goes both ways. Yeah, by, right? yeah, I Isn't agree. Cool? Love it. Nice. Thank you, David. All right. Right now we're at 915 and Justin Horace he, Horn is here with a forecast. Hi. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a little foggy out there, guys, this morning to start. Uh, a little drizzly, too. It's been a damp well, last 24 hours or so. We had some uh, decent rain yesterday. First, though, let's start with the fog, show you where it is at this hour. The uh, thickest fog is out there near Uvalde. We're not seeing much, though, here in San Antonio. 
uh, things are really pretty quiet. And uh, I think we're not going to see a whole lot of fog next couple of hours uh, here in town. There's a look at some of the trans guide cameras. And yeah, the roads are a little wet, so there is some drizzle, but uh, not necessarily the low visibility that they're dealing with out to the west. Uh, looking uh, live at the airport, you can see uh, cloudy skies. Temperatures 55 degrees west southwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. Humidity obviously very high. Radar does show some showers off to the west, so places like Sonora down to Del Rio. There are some of these light showers moving through another little piece of energy that will work likely to the north of us today, but there's still probably enough energy there where we'll get a couple showers showing up on the radar this afternoon. And if we're not seeing rain, we're not seeing fog, we're not seeing drizzle, it's going to be cloudy. And temperatures at this hour sitting at 55 degrees at the airport, 56 New Braunfels, 52 Bernie Stage. And uh, out west still in the 40s where clouds are a little thicker and we are dealing with a little bit of that rain. 48 Rock Springs, 49 right now in Junction. It does look like there are a few breaks perhaps as you get up towards uh, Kerrville and Fredericksburg. We'll keep an eye on that, but again, I think for the most part, it's, it's a cloudy day. Dew points in the 50s, uh, there's enough moisture out there. It still feels uh, somewhat uh, humid, I suppose. Uh, looking at the uh, visible satellite and radar, you got some showers off to the west, uh, some showers out around Dallas, and this uh, extends all the way out into the Arizona area because uh, we have that area of low pressure off to the west. Drought monitor, shows that uh, still a lot of the state in drought. Not much has changed. Last week we had 48% uh, of the state in drought. Now about 49% of the state is in drought. It's the same old areas that still need the rain. Now we got some rain yesterday where you see this extreme drought and that has not been factored in yet. Uh, so that it was good placement, but we're, we're still dealing with it here and we'll, we'll still take some more. And there is some more in the forecast. So the forecast for today, again, some showers generally out to our north and west. And then as we get into tonight, we may actually see a little bit of clearing, a little piece of energy. And then by tomorrow morning, we start off with some fog and drizzle, but I think it clears out by your Friday afternoon. So if you're looking forward to some sun, we're going to get you some tomorrow. Should uh, turn out to be a beautiful day. From there, as we look towards the weekend on Saturday, a couple showers late on Saturday. And then as we get into Sunday, as this system gets a little bit closer, I think we could see some thunderstorms. And that would be mainly late Sunday evening, maybe into early Monday. We'll be on the tail end of things, not expecting a ton of rain out of this, but something to watch for Sunday night. Forecast for us today, up around 65. Cloudy skies, a slight chance for shower or two. 76 tomorrow, so with the sun, the temperatures bump up. Some uh, afternoon sprinkles or showers Saturday, 67, and then a 40% chance of showers and storms late on Sunday, 76. After that, it does clear out, 73 Monday, 69 Tuesday, and maybe another chance of rain on Wednesday. So the active pattern continues, guys. All right, we need the rain, but I'm liking the way that Friday looks for looks, now. <laughs> it looks nice. It does. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yep. 919, 54 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Last week, we told you about a face mask with an air purifying system. After the break, how has provided opportunities for professionals in the manufacturing industry here in the Alamo City. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is a game changer for everyone working at home. You can now enjoy your beverages warm from the first sip to the very last drop with this mug warmer. It's the electric smart mug warmer. The lightweight sleek cup warmer uses smart technology to keep your beverage at the temperature you choose. It has 18 watt heating element that keeps your beverage between 104 and 140 degrees at the temperature you choose. Now it's safe automatically turns off after one minute if it senses there is no weight on there. Spills will not short out the water resistant design. Comes in black or white. Manufacturer's 30 day warranty and it can also be used for oatmeal, soups, beverages and more. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price $22.99. That's a 61% discount. You can find this deal and many others on caseatdeals.com. Last week, we brought you the story of a San Antonio startup that says its face mask purifies the air you inhale and exhale. Just Air's technology has not only given added protection to those in the medical industry, but it's also provided opportunity for professionals in the engineering and manufacturing industry. Our Alicia Pereira visited the company's production facility to learn more about its importance in the growing tech scene here in San Antonio. It all starts at the hands of sewist Noemi Reina. 
piece by piece in the Alamo City. Fabric, silicone grips, elastic straps, tiny plastic pieces, pads for comfort, electronic parts, and much more quickly transform into the Just Air special face mask. So being able to get the product quicker, uh, not have to have so much inventory in the pipeline. It also allows us to be able to make changes to the product. Uh, we can control the production. It's an assembly line powering up the tech scene in San Antonio. San Antonio is a great location. It's nice central to the U.S., so shipping costs from here are much better than most other places. And one that's provided a job to experienced electronic manufacturers like Maria and Jesse, who otherwise would be unemployed during the pandemic. Well, all the people you see here, we were able to rescue from Season Group as they shut down their plant and reemploy them here. The blower unit is all electronic, so it's battery packs and fans and soldering and things like that. So we really were looking for people with that experience that could come on board quickly and help us get up to speed quickly. The startup has also given way for students to get a foot in the door. We have two interns from uh, UTSA. One's a biomedical engineer who's working on an advanced manufacturing degree, and the other's a mechanical engineer. Goldberg says the local in-house production gives the company greater control of the inventory, and more importantly, a chance to hire more locals. It's mainly labor-intensive, so we could scale very easily and very quickly. So the professionals that we just saw they have years of experience, so I asked them if they really ever imagined that their livelihood would depend on these special face masks. They, of course, said no, they had no idea their walk and their career would lead them to here, but they're so thankful that Just Air, this startup, decided to bring the company here to San Antonio, in turn, um, allow them to put food on the table for their families. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. And if you want to learn more about the product itself or purchase a mask, we have an article on kset.com with all the details. And always go there and check it out for more background. 926, 55 degrees. Of course, there is more ahead on GMSA at 9. And when you think of San Antonio sports, you think of the Spurs, of course, and for years. City leaders have tried to attract another major professional sports team, but had little luck. After the break, a closer look at this week's KSET Explains episode and the future of San Antonio sports. Speaking of sports, Spurs fell short again last night, this time against the Golden State Warriors in San Francisco. David and RJ join us with a Spurs chat still ahead. And four years of immigration policy changes will likely be changed with the stroke of a pen in the coming weeks and months. Why President Biden's plans to undo many Trump policies could face some resistance? That's in our Tribune Thursday's report. With President Biden now calling the White House home and Democrats controlling Congress, Texas Republicans are gearing up for what could be a contentious four years. And sweeping reversals of federal immigration policy might get some pushback in the Lone Star State. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune joins us from Austin with more. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. After having an ally in the White House for the past four years, Texas Republicans are readying for the familiar role of conservative counterweight. The Tribune writes that with the return of a Democratic administration, the notorious Texas versus Feds lawsuits are expected to return in full force. How do you see this playing out? Yeah, uh, lawmakers here are readying for it. You saw that in some of the statements they issued yesterday, uh, measured congratulations with, uh, you know, vows to watch for potential constitutional infringements on the Tenth Amendment, states' rights, the Second Amendment, uh, gun rights. Uh, even Governor Greg Abbott toyed without giving much detail about maybe making Texas a, a Second Amendment sanctuary state where uh, government at any level could not come and take your guns. We'll see, uh, you know, what comes of that. But yeah, looking at immigration, health care, environmental protections, uh, the state's ready. And uh, then Governor, or then Attorney General, now Governor Abbott, uh, you know, said he woke up and went into the office and sued the Obama administration. Uh, Ken Paxton took up that mantle in 2015 and, and seems to uh, want to continue that now with the Biden administration. And with those statements, with President Joe Biden sworn in, Texas Republicans in Congress issued a flurry of statements and they were quite varied. Really varied, uh, you know, and some stark contrast from statements they were issuing just a few weeks ago and questioning the validity of the election and, and claiming fraud, of which there was no evidence, uh, to congratulating uh, the new president and, and saying they're looking forward to working with him. Uh, you know, some were surprising. Uh, Beth Van Dyne, a uh, conservative up in the Irving area, uh, signed on to a letter with 15 other 
uh, GOP freshmen, 16 other, and saying that, uh, you know, vowing to work across the aisle and, and go against the, you know, political fray uh, to get things done. You saw that up and down, but probably the, the harshest uh, statements or most critical came from the state senators uh, or U.S. senators from this state, that being Cruz and Cornyn, uh, really having strong words about uh, the presidential permits now being uh, pulled back by the Biden administration on completing the Keystone Pipeline, claiming that would mean uh, a lot of jobs for Texans in the Gulf Coast area. So uh, very, very much uh, in the responses, and it was just day one. <laughs> Efforts by the Biden administration to affect immigration policy change through executive order sure to face some pushback here in Texas. And President Biden wasted no time on day one, signing a stack of executive orders to roll back some of former President Trump's immigration policies. It's a pretty long list. And consequential, uh, you know, rolling back, yes, but also preserving uh, the program that protects uh, dreamers. Uh, those brought, uh, Im you know, Im immigrants brought to the country through no fault of their own by their parents and have grown up here as, you know, the only country they've known. Uh, he directed the Department of Homeland Security to preserve that program. But yes, uh, roll back uh, contracts to build the border wall, uh, roll back the Remain in Mexico program that allows uh, asylum seekers to, or forces rather, asylum seekers to remain on the other side of the border while they await uh, asylum hearings on this side of the border. Order. And then, of course, undid on day one, uh, the Trump administration's push to exclude undocumented immigrants from the census count. Uh, Biden undid that uh, yesterday through one of his executive actions. So a flurry of uh, action on day one. And uh, yeah, we'll see what comes of it as far as Texas's reaction in the courts or otherwise. All right. Thank you. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thanks, Alana. Thank you. Outside with live cam, 55 degrees. I haven't been outside since the middle of the night, Justin. So I don't, is it feel <laughs> bone chilling still out there? No, you know, it's actually warmer now than okay. it was all day yesterday. So we're, we're warming up a little bit, but the cloud cover is going to keep us from getting, you know, really warm this afternoon. We're still talking 60s for highs today. Let's look across the state right now and I'll show you that there is nothing that's bitterly cold. Okay, we got 44 up in Amarillo. That's chilly, but not not winter cold, 57 Lufkin, 65 in Houston, 60 down there in Brownsville. And again, I think we get into the mid 60s this afternoon. As we look across the country, and I think I've said this all winter, it is amazing to me how we have not had the bitter cold spill down from Canada. It just hasn't been there this winter. It is cold, International Falls seven, but it, it, it's not, you know, we're not seeing negative numbers or stuff like that. And there's not a ton of snowfall across the country. You see a little bit of it up there in the northeast. Showers lining up across the southern tier of states. It's been a fairly active pattern for us here in Texas. The rain did wash out some of the mountain cedar. We dropped down to 50 today for the mountain cedar count. Of course, the, uh, the other side to that is that uh, molds jumped up. Forecast for today, we're going to see some drizzle through noontime. And then just a slight chance of a couple showers this afternoon up to 65 for your high temperature. Uh, weekend looks a little cloudy, too. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Trans Guide this morning, I-35 Alamo. Not too bad right now. When you think of San Antonio sports, you no doubt think of our Spurs. With five NBA championships and decades of competitive basketball, the Spurs have had success many other cities only can envy. But episode 21 of Case It Explains looks at San Antonio's prospects and viability of getting another major pro franchise. What are the prospects of San Antonio possibly getting another professional sports team sometime in the future? This is hardly the first time that question has been asked. And that's really the premise of this episode of Case That Explains. But we take a look at a lot more than what just might be happening in terms of a team to come to San Antonio. What has to happen to our city in general for that to actually take shape? Yeah, Myra, this has been sort of the lingering question for decades is that one, will we ever get another professional sports team, a major professional sports team, and two, can we support it not only economically but within our fan base? Can fans go? Can we do this in multiple different ways? So I think we explore a lot of different a lot of different angles that people may have not thought of. It's not very easy to just relocate a team. Uh, it definitely comes with a lot of different uh, checks and balances, so this will be interesting. And team owners, they have to have a reason to invest in a city, and that has to do a lot with the economy of that city. What kinds of companies are there? 
there? What sorts of jobs? What are the income levels, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, that would be needed to buy season tickets or go to several games, whatever the sport may be? So we take a look at all those different things, plus uh, the economy that surrounds a new arena whenever there is something like an AT&T Center or an Alamo Dome built. What does that do to the area surrounding it? Does that economic boom that is so often promised mm -hmm. actually come to fruition? Yeah, very interesting discussion there. We've seen the Alamo Dome do pretty well with the convention center around it and other hotels, but the AT&T Center, not so much. So I think this is definitely a debate that not only San Antonio has had over the years, but other cities across the country when it comes to putting in public money into building new arenas or stadiums. And I think it's something that, of course, we don't know what the future holds, right? But again, like RJ mentioned, it is a question that comes up time and time again. And no one this episode is advocating for us getting another pro sports team. We're just looking at whether it really would be a possibility for San Antonio and taking a look back at the past, too, mm -hmm. about uh, how we've come so close in the past but stopped just short. What are some reasons uh, why that continues to happen for us? Yeah, and real quickly, just the future of the Spurs as well as they are continue to be our only professional sports team here. Some interesting discussions there with some experts and, of course, Mayor Ron Nerman. We cannot forget the Spurs. Yeah. Check out this episode, ksat.com slash explains, or you can watch it on the KSAT TV app. Some, but not all viewers, panic a little bit when we talk about stuff like this. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're, we're, you're such a big part of our city. I know. I'm, I'm actually panicking myself. Are you? Like, Got a little anxiety <laughs> building up? Just a little bit. We'll talk yeah. about it. Okay. 938, 55 degrees. You're watching TMSA at 9. Tough night for our wonderful Spurs. Uh, the Silver and Black weren't able to bring home a win against the Golden State Warriors. David and RJ with a recap after the break. How's your anxiety now? Welcome back. It's 942. So if you didn't stay up for last night's Spurs game, maybe that's not a bad thing. Ouch. Ouch. Spurs get beat in the Bay Area. David and RJ here to discuss the one that got away pretty fast from the silver and black. Good morning, Steph, gentlemen. Anxiety, a little ouch. You know, today she's <laughs> like all excited, fired up. She's yeah, like, she's like, uh, on a roller coaster of emotions <laughs> here. Wow. I, I know. I saw RJ in the parking lot this morning. Yes. I'm like, are you here to drive a stake through my heart? Oh, <laughs> man. <you> Mark. <laughs> Steph, it's wow. one game. I know, game. but it was a horrible won. game. <laughs> yes, and yes. last time they did this, they were out to lunch. I don't know where they went yesterday, but they... <laughs> A dinner? Dinner. Out the, yeah, it was, it was yeah. the food's yeah. great out in uh, San Francisco, but uh, let me tell you yeah. something. Rough night. Somebody on the Spurs now owns like a really good condo <laughs> with bricks all over it. Because that's all they were doing last night oh, was firing bricks. Up bricks. Got it it yeah. was bad. Uh, well, am I lying? No, definitely yeah, not. Exactly. Um, yeah, Spurs, I mean, from Ooh. the start, really struggled in this one. Uh, and uh, again, this was a, a reminder that Steph Curry is pretty good at basketball. Yeah. We've not seen you Steph threw that in one a while. Over way, though. Um, early on here, Spurs kind of hanging in there, but uh, DeMar DeRozan gets three fouls early. Now, what and was I just, that? I, yeah, just, just not, not a good night. I think not having Derek White kind of hurt him. And Lonnie Walker, I, you know, he took two shots look in the this, first half. With Where, DeMar hello? Hunter. Anybody want to play some defense? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Pop's closer to the guy there than, than the, than the five guys on the floor. You guys going to break out this soapbox? Oh, or man. Oh, it's, it's a new year, so people. Ready? Come on. You know roll it. Ready? say the definition of crazy is soapbox? when you do something over and over again. Oh, here we go. Yay! You do something over and over again, expecting a different result, and it doesn't happen. They shot 33 threes. 33. Mm -hmm. They made four at some point. It's like, you know, when you're out playing golf, if you play golf, you know, and you slice <laughs> it into the woods and then you slice it into the woods and then you slice it into the woods and you lose like a half a dozen golf balls on the first three holes, you kind of go, well, maybe I should try something yeah, different with probably, my swing. Probably want to well, change your approach. if you're throwing up bricks for yeah. a quarter and a half, maybe you ought to try something different. I don't know, maybe drive to the basket. Well, Maybe play and, a little defense. And one know. guy that we were talking about beforehand, coach, before we but. came in here, obviously, look, LaMarcus Aldridge, he's being asked to be more of an outside threat. But as David was saying, I mean, look, it, you're going to take eight <laughs> shots a game. You need to be inside and defending this guy. And this guy's a rookie. He should not have scored 20 points on the Spurs. I, I just, no. Yeah, I look, look, at, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. LaMarcus, uh, they had like 50 LaMarcus. points in the paint, 56 in the paint. And that dude had like six, seven slams. It's like at some point you got to 
to say, okay, that's enough of that. Oh, there's another one. Apparently not. That there's nice. another slam. Like, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know what really upsets me? If I can, if I can, if I can go, go on. Go I stayed up late to watch this game, and by the third quarter, I said, that's good. I'm yeah, good. I think that yeah, Spurs think kind a of, lot of called it an early night, too. Uh, yeah. Hey, the one guy who did play pretty that. good, uh, we saw a couple of highlights there. DeJounte Murray, 22 points, had a nice overall game. Let's hear uh, what DeJounte had to say. We came out of the first half and just got punched in the face and didn't know how to get back up. Uh, you know, as a whole, not making shots don't make it, you know, better. So, uh, you know, halftime, we try to come out and fight and fight. And they just, you know, they just, they were the Warriors. They kept fighting, kept fighting, and we just couldn't get over that hump. All right, I'm going to get off my box now. <laughs> there's, 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 let's First one of the year. You know, got it ready are to we go. really surprised that this happened? Are we really surprised that this is – and it's going to happen more times down the road because they're just a young team and, they're, and they got to, they got to learn to, to fight through this mess. That, you yeah, know, like I, you I think – You do the same thing over and over again if it ain't working. I think, like you said, if the, if the outside shots are not working, got to take it inside and try and at least get to the foul line. Uh, Keldon Johnson struggled. Again, second year, he's going to have he's going to have these types of games. I, again, I really wish I would have seen Lonnie Walker take – be a little bit more yeah. aggressive in the first half when DeMar was in a foul trouble there. So, there, I mean, there, there's, you know, it's one game. They, they've had two or three like this. They're, yes. they're still in the Definitely. hunt. They're, nothing's changed that much. That guy's just brutal, though. Oh, yeah. man, that guy's good. Uh, next up, Mavericks. Mavericks. Here at home. You know what? Mavericks aren't doing so hot this year. Okay. Don't say that. <laughs> I know. I feel like we jinxed them last time. Well, I, I, so did, did I, last I just jinxed them when yeah. I said that. All right. 730. Yeah. That's Tomorrow that. they've got, uh, what, two at home? No. two. Yeah, two at home, one on the road, and they come back for five at yeah, home. Yeah. Overall, next uh, so. nine of 11 games at the yeah. AT&T Center. So, so Spurs you know. can uh, take care They'll of get it together. Yeah. I'd, like, right there. I'd like to end on this note. Okay. <laughs> it should be appreciated that it took 21 days into the new year before you broke, broke out the soapbox. Uh, I really? liked it. We missed 20, it. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. 21. You talked it into existence last time. Yeah. Uh, you made period. it Tim Duncan's number into the new year before we <laughs> oh, needed soap box. Wow. Yeah. Appropriate. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks. You can look it up, though. It'll be all right. It'll be, all, it'll be okay, Stephanie. Yes, thank you. It will be okay. We have good days and we have bad days. Yeah. Let's hope the good are more than the bad. Let's hope so. <laughs> Too bad That's group hugs are on the yeah. outs right now. Aww. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Justin's here with another look at our forecast. Hi, Justin. Group hug. Hey there. Uh, oh, man, that soap box is awesome. Okay, uh, <laughs> we're looking at rainfall totals here. We're at about an inch for the year okay about two tenths below average for the year but as i always say when we show this graphics keep in mind we were well below average to end last year so we're still digging out of a big hole here and we could use a little bit more rain we haven't gotten much over the last few days we've gotten some biggest totals have been off to the west out near uh, brackettville where they picked up close to an inch del rio you're at about three tenths of an inch you just missed out on some of the heavier rain yesterday in austin obviously doing pretty well. Here's a look at the radar right now. There are some showers just to the north of Del Rio, so yeah, you may get a few sprinkles here over the next uh, 30 minutes or hour or so. Some showers off to the west around Sonora, but not seeing much here around San Antonio. Just some drizzle, and we had seen a little bit of fog, but that it does not seem to be an issue at all. In fact, visibility looks really good at, uh, looking towards the airport. 56 degrees at the airport, 54 Stinson, and we've got a southwesterly wind anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Most of us in the mid-50s right now, 54 King Lake, 54 Comfort, 50 right now in Las Maples. Still in the 40s around Del Rio. Again, a few showers here, 49, 50 Rock Springs, and 56 in Kennedy. The fog is lifted for the most part, even around U Valley, where we were dealing with quite a bit of fog earlier. One spot where there still is some issues, uh, Bevo, where it's at a uh, mile and three quarters there. So the big picture, a lot of cloud cover. There were a few breaks. And we're still seeing a few up there around Austin, so the sun may pop out briefly if you're in parts of the northern uh, areas of the hill country. Otherwise, we're expecting a fairly cloudy day. We've still got an upper level low off to the west. It's giving us lift, and you see all the showers here across west Texas. We'll just sort of get clipped by some of this activity, and we can see the spin there on water vapor. So once this passes by, we'll get some clearing skies tomorrow. Sun pops out warmer on your Friday, too. So Friday looks really good. Behind us, there's another system. Out in the Pacific, there's Seattle there, the Washington coastline. This is the next system that will be dropping down, and this gives us some storm chances on Sunday. So here's how it plays out. Forecast calls for a couple showers generally off to our north today. Cloudy skies, and then uh, maybe a little bit of a break tonight. A little bit more in the way of showers early, early tomorrow morning. But by, say, midday, skies are clearing. We're in the sun. And I mentioned we'll jump into the 70s tomorrow. Then that next system starts to dig south. 
by Saturday. This is Saturday evening. We'll start to see a few showers coming back in as moisture returns. And then on Sunday, as some of this energy moves towards the plains, we'll get some thunderstorms, I think, probably late Sunday night. And there's a small window for it. I think a lot of the energy will probably be to our north, but there is a chance we could get some thunderstorms here. Temperatures today up around 65. Cloudy skies, uh, maybe a shower or two. And then 76 tomorrow after some morning fog. 67 Saturday, some sprinkles or a few showers late. And then a 40% chance of storms mainly Sunday evening, maybe even into early, early Monday morning. But it clears out nicely on Monday, 73. And then we'll get another chance of rain down the line, it looks like, on Wednesday. But temperatures fairly spring-like, guys. Yeah, 70s. I can give my heater a break. Yes, you can. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Justin. But now it's 9, 50, 55 degrees. We'll be right back. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, join us for another Katie's Science Lab experiment. This week, we're going to learn how to power a light bulb using lemons. <laughs> so here's what you'll need to participate, at least four lemons, copper wire, alligator clips, nails, and an LED light. Again, that's tomorrow on GMSA at 9. We are still passing out invitations to our virtual mental health awareness town hall. We'll have a panel of experts to explain mental illness. It's all coming up on Wednesday, January 27th, 2 p.m. More information is available right now at ksatcommunity.com. And let's take one last look outside with Transguide. There's 281 at the quarry. Very smooth right now. And the roads look like they're drying up a little bit. We'll get up around 64, 65 this afternoon. Uh, there is a chance for some drizzle, a uh, few showers later today, and then we bump it back up to 76 tomorrow, 67 Saturday, another chance for some showers and storms on Sunday. Justin, did you know that the oldest known house in North America is located in Central Texas? I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's located in Galt, Yes. 40 miles north of Austin. Uh, is it house? Yeah, it's a, it's a house. I hadn't heard of this. So it's on private property wow. and um, I've lived in Austin as well and north of Austin. So yeah, this is estimated to be around 14,000 years old Whoa. or even older. And that's according to Clark Warneck, the executive director of the Galt School of Archaeological Research. Yeah, Warnecke told KSAT that the structure was probably wood at some time. It was built and the trees were likely used for the home's corners. So it is suspected that the builder gathered baskets of gravel from a nearby creek and then poured them inside the structure to raise the floor off the clay, which the area is mostly comprised of. Now, several structures up in Colorado date back to an estimated 11 to 12,000 years old. And at this, a site in Puerto Montt, Chile, there are several structures that Warnicke said are thought to be about 14,800 years old. But this one? Wow, it's right here in our backyard. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, this is a quote from him. He said, this is not something you construct if you are just here overnight. A tent or lean-to would do that. Uh, this is yet another indication that the earliest people in the Americas were not the highly migratory big game hunters we were taught about in elementary school, but broad spectrum hunters and gatherers. It's on private property. Access is prohibited. For more information, check it out on ksat.com. Have a great day, guys.